My screen, right? I don't know. Hello. Yeah, uh, I'm just assuming everybody can hear me and I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, so, uh, in shops, uh, we are a startup uh, passionate about creative design and delivering additive manufacturing uh, for engineers, uh, for doctors, and uh, production activities. So, we have been working extensively uh, with uh, medical device companies including ventilator manufacturers. We also work in aerospace and uh, now we are wanting to bring in custom uh, medical devices, including prosthetics and orthotics uh, to India. So uh, we, are, we started uh, with two founders, uh, me being one of the tech founders. Uh, I did my bachelor's uh, from uh, Bits Money in computer science and did my master's in data analytics. And that is where how I bring in uh, you know the, the tech side of end labs here. So what we are, uh, you know, our mission is to uh, digitalize the entire manufacturing process, not just for healthcare, but for electronics as well. Uh, the primary technology that we work in, uh, work with is multi-jet fusion. Um, there is a reason why we do that. Uh, the, the, you know, the foremost reason is the smooth finish of the parts that we get. When we talk of, uh, let's say, an ankle foot orthosis, we want to give the best quality uh, to our patients and we want to give it, do it at, at a scale. So that is where the cost effectiveness of the multi-jet fusion machines, they come into picture. Plus on top of it, uh, we are looking at uh, making uh, you know, very strong parts and uh, the strength in all X, Y, Z direction uh, comes in really nice out of the big industrial multi-jet fusion machines. Uh, apart from that, uh, the dimensional accuracies that we're looking at are uh, quite in the region that are acceptable for an application of prosthetics and orthotics. Uh, we have also been currently uh, you know, doing testing in terms of the number of cycles all our devices you know, they withstand. Uh, I have some products listed here. Uh, some of them are, you know, have been using uh, the same technology, uh, not in India, but you know, other places in the world. Uh, we are able, on the left, you see the insoles uh, that were designed by Engelab. So that is one of the projects that we are currently working on. Uh, I will get into the, uh, you know, the digital workflow in the next slide. On the right, you see the braces, uh, the, the static braces, and then the dynamic braces, plus the knee sockets uh, that have come into the market. And what we are trying to do at Angel Labs is try and bring the same thing to India as well. Uh, the same technology has been used widely in uh, you know, Australia and US, and uh, we would like to get that in India. So uh, our workflow, I'll quickly, uh, we'll be in brief, I'll just give an overview of how we go on digitalizing uh, the medical device industry. Uh, we start off with the scan. Uh, the scanning that we do is using a white light scanner. Uh, it takes more or less uh, five to 10 minutes for the patient to, uh, for, for the uh, the scanning guy to take uh, the scan of the patient. Uh, once we have the scan here, which is like highly accurate, uh, we move on to design in the CAD software. Primarily we use a uh, form to design uh, the exact medical device 
uh, for the patient. And uh, the next step that we follow is, uh, on average, we manufacture 28 to 30 insoles in one single build of uh, the multi-jet fusion machine. And what you see on the top is the finished product uh, with the top and the middle layer. Uh, we offer different colors and different finishes for those layers. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, from a practitioner's uh, viewpoint, uh, the workflow is uh, you, you take a scan using either uh, an industrial uh, you know, high accuracy scanner or an iPad scanner. Uh, followed by filling the form that we have for every practitioner with different options uh, you know, to choose from and what modifications are need to be done for a specific patient. And once that is done, that feedback comes to us and we manufacture it uh, for the PNO. And, and it does the placement of the insole or the uh, ankle foot orthosis. I've kept it really short, just letting us, letting you guys know how you can reach us at info at the rate of labs .co .uk. Right. Okay. So that would be me. Can you hear me? I don't see. Okay. Right, uh, so uh, that is about it from my end. Uh, I'd like to invite Jody uh, to come over and present. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Hello, 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 hello. Well, I suggest if you have headphones, you could probably put your headphones on. Yeah. How about, uh, you know, Prashant, if you're there, you can probably go on and then uh, by that time, Jody might be able to find his headphones. Prashant, are you there? You can ask us another one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Prashant, are you there? So sure if Prashant is here. So I think uh, Ethner, if uh, you don't mind coming forward and presenting, I'd like to invite you. Anyone, Anyone can, can start, start, and after that, I will find. You want me to start? Yeah, Ethner, I think that's better. Okay. All right. Let's see if that works. Is my sound at least okay? Okay. Let me see if I can switch to sharing here. Are you able to see this? Okay. Okay, uh, my name is Aetho Benter and uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Unique. Um, we are going to talk here about uh, <clears throat> 3D printing of especially prosthetic wear. I'm going to start and give a little bit more kind of the background of um, why we did this and where we are. And, um, and then Katarina Löwenadler is going to follow me and uh, talk more about uh, the clinical application. Um, so uh, there are 1 billion people in, in the world that uh, live with some form of uh, disability. And uh, so it's not, it's pretty much one out of every six. So it is a, a severe uh, issue. Uh, I have spent uh, my time um, working with people with disabilities uh, back since 1995. 
I'm revealing here how old I am. Um, uh, first with the company Osher, uh, where we help people to run, uh, for instance, in the Paralympic and Olympic Games. And, um, and then uh, all kind of braces uh, and support products. So we moved over to Bionics in, in early 2000. And, um, and then we, um, uh, I was with a company called Exobionics where we introduced um, uh, the first exoskeletons uh, in the world uh, for both paralyzed people as well as um, uh, military people that needed to carry things on the back, uh, heavy, heavy loads. And um, and so, um, but since then, the world has even continues to change. And um, in, uh, we have focused very much in our world of prosthetics on function, maybe not so much on on aesthetics. And um, and that is something that um, the end user is. Um, I would say uh, the end user has changed a lot. The amputee or people who have to wear these devices for a longer period of time. Um, there are, they are more empowered, first of all, through technology. They have access to uh, information and, um, and health-related uh, facts uh, through the phones and other, other equipment. And, um, and so, so that is changing a, a, a lot. Uh, the, the power is moving literally into their hands. Um, also, we see that um, they are much more confident and conscious about self-expression, and um, and um, and they demand uh, more when it comes to that, and which we see also happen uh, trending over to that um, these medical devices, which obviously are our eyewear, for instance, glasses, that those um, are becoming all much more fashionable. And, um, and and so on, something that um, uh, is obviously normal, but uh, has not been normal in our industry. Also, if we look at it from clinical perspective, um, the people who actually make these devices and work with it on a daily basis in clinics, um, they, their world has also changed very much. Um, they used to be very much manual, uh, how these things were put together. Uh, prosthetics and so on. And what um, has changed is that um, their mind has changed. <laughs> they have become much more digitally minded. Uh, also in these last times, especially now in the last year, um, people are much more virtual. And, um, and so our environment has changed a lot. And uh, the education of the people, the clinical people has, has changed. They are they have gone from being maybe more like hand workers over to being highly educated uh, university degrees. And, uh, and that is changing uh, a lot, uh, this environment. Uh, also, what has changed is technology, um, which we are talking about a lot here. Uh, 3D printing, other exponential technologies um, have, uh, have um, both uh, improved a lot computer power is doubling every every two years and 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 going down in prices at the same time as much um, pretty much double every two years and um, and that is having opening up a lot of opportunities um, also uh, these smartphones I mentioned before I mean they have and and computer power uh, data etc um, data rooms and uh, and whatsoever is giving us access uh, to things like never before. And, um, and then of course, many of these digital devices like 3D printing is, is opening up the windows uh, to systems that are much more uh, sustainable. And so, uh, so these are things that have changed dramatically just in the last uh, 10 years. So if you think that bionics and everything that we did here before were fantastic, it seems like a little bit outdated in many ways. So that um, <clears throat> come, brings us to 3D printing. This is the Gartner height curve, which shows a little bit how uh, technology moves uh, from being early stage technology over to becoming hype. And then uh, normally <laughs> it hypes too much and then falls off the curve. And uh, before it maybe becomes more commercial, 
And uh, in many ways, I think uh, 3D printing, this is a hype curve from Karstner. They, they, threw, they, 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 they basically put this up every, every year. This is the one I think from last year, which shows some medical devices when it comes to 3D printing. They have come from probably being the most, uh, there was a lot of hype around, uh, around this maybe four or five years ago. So it's definitely come a little bit off that curve. And, um, and uh, medical devices, I think, uh, are coming into the space where you want to be, which is here on the right side, where things become more commercializable. And um, we see, for instance, dental devices, which are far to the right here, uh, enterprise 3D printing. These are already very commercialized technologies and applications. Medical devices are on the way there. They're not quite there yet. And that's why we, in our field, prosthetics, I would say maybe not more than 10% of prosthetic devices, probably less, is 3D printed today. So it's still early days. So it's important to keep that in mind that we are really on the forefront of this. And um, But what was great to see uh, in 2010 to 2014 was that there were a couple of companies popping up. Uh, 3D Systems, which is a leading company in 3D printing, they, um, they did uh, uh, come out with very interesting, uh, well-designed uh, prosthetic fairings, they called it. Uh, that wrap around prosthetics, and they did this. Um, actually, it was bespoke. It was a small startup company out of San Francisco that did this and was sold 3D systems. And uh, and so this was very early days, and uh, and the prices uh, were extremely high. I mean, it was ex these were made with SLS printers that um, uh, were still uh, patented um, heavily by by 3D systems, and um, and uh, it was not until those patents came off that we started to see that uh, that was in 2014 that these things uh, became more affordable. And uh, this were, these were these fairings, for instance, five thousand uh, dollars, which obviously is way above what insurance companies pay for, even in countries like Germany, which are very affordable, which have a very well reimbursed um, uh, or, or good insurance system to to cover for this, uh, even. Those type of countries couldn't afford it. Um, you had to fly into San Francisco. You you had to. <laughs> it was really way ahead of its time. But that was about the time when we started Unique uh, because we thought when these patents came off that that might be a good time to start. And so we came then into the picture and um, we thought that it would be interesting to uh, uh, try to combine not just the technology but uh, really look into design as well as um, um, fashion and, um, and, and combine that also with a, a very different way to go to market uh, virtually. And, um, and so we started with uh, these covers, uh, which we were able now to make much cheaper than before because uh, the printers that uh, uh, we use for this have come down in price a lot. And, um, and so uh, going from five thousand uh, dollars down to more in the range of thousand and below, which is much more in the range of what insurance companies, at least in Europe and in the U.S., can afford. I know it's not where any other insurance uh, companies are in other countries like India, but I'm very hopeful that we are kind of steering in that direction as well uh, over time. Um, and then um, uh, we also uh, put out, like, uh, you know, uh, focus very much on the end user. And uh, in a way, working with the end users in a way that giving them more choice than they've had before and empowering them more was very much part of the way um, our DNA was set up. And, um, and then uh, <clears throat> 3D printers, of course. Uh, we we were able to um, uh, deploy printers in the beginning. The printers weren't very durable, uh, but over time, in 2017, when HP came around, uh, we had got fant fantastic printers that we have been using. And um, and then um, we have set up educational system and so on to uh, promote this. That um, 
Katarina will talk a little bit about afterwards. Um, so this is kind of a journey. As I said before, this is fashion. So we started on Fashion Week in New York, 2014. Had the first, one of the first amputees, veteran Alex Minsky, walking on the on the stage, and um, and then uh, we did sign up a, a license agreement um, with 3D Systems that I mentioned before that had kind of created this technology, and uh, we acquired their patents, and um, they invested in in Unique. Um, then uh, we uh, joined up with uh, the most powerful robot in the world, uh, the smartphone, and we launched an app that basically takes the clinicians and the end user through the buying experience and the biometric uh, capturing process and in a more kind of um, fluent way. And uh, and that was just done with an app that we launched in 2015, which was the first app uh, to make prosthetics ever. And um, we um, we teamed up with HP in 2017. That was a big change, led to a great quality improvement in the covers. And then we moved from the covers over to sockets and uh, complete processes, basically. Um, and that was in 2019. And um, so today. Uh, we offer these prosthetic covers. We've been doing that since 2014. Uh, like I said, uh, the, the cover since 2019, and uh, now we do also arms and things like that. So what is it so special about the covers? Uh, well, why should actually be on the fact that they look beautiful and all of that? Yes, of course, they yeah, they definitely give people a, a new way of expressing themselves, taking it from these kind of very kind of dull-looking foam covers that amputees used to wear before uh, over to something that's more fashionable. Uh, we make this for all type of amputees, like I said before, uh, and any type of prosthesis we can fit it to. Um, so we have a big library of all, all prosthetic components, and, um, and we are able to adapt our, our covers to those. And over time, they become extremely lightweight uh, and um, and uh, kind of you know easy to wear. Uh, they are water resistant. Um, uh, in these times, uh, what is important also is that um, is uh, that it's easy to disinfect or it's very hygienic solution compared to the foams specifically. And yeah. 3D printing is uh, very sustainable. I mean, it's very, uh, there's no waste, obviously, because this is all made uh, to order and uh, which uh, lowers inventory. And um, even over time, um, and, and talking about India, uh, we could very well see that we might uh, 3D print it in, in countries like India to also uh, eliminate the distribution cost and, uh, and, and make it even more affordable and so um, we have it in all shapes and colors and designs and uh, and we launch new catalogs every every year with this uh, so it's very kind of like a passion almost which people can though customize completely so they can engrave uh, the names or um, vinyls or they can add to it some extra protection if they want to use it more like in the gym and uh, extremely easy to put on uh, just with a snapping uh, mechanism and um, and uh, and people can come to us also for very specialized customized design and uh, sometimes the prices can go up if they truly want to design this out themselves but they also can do and so um, for all extremities like that uh, and also what we have done is we have um, created basically systems uh, for all kinds of applications. There are sometimes very specialized designs in prosthetics, uh, like for instance, this uh, newly invented osteo integration, where you basically inject um, the prosthesis into the bone structure of the amputees, and uh, we can also accommodate uh, to those uh, special needs. And, um, and all kind of different type of components that we can adapt uh, our prosthetics or our covers to. So, uh, 
So it, 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 it is about the details and it's about, you know, literally fitting unique to everybody. Uh, what are the key benefits uh, of the covers? Um, they are, um, I mean, they come with, first of all, this intuitive app, which makes it super easy uh, to uh, capture the biometrics and uh, pick out the designs and manage also the orders after uh, you have uh, placed the order. Um, it notifies you about mock-ups and things like that. So Katarina will talk a little bit better about this. And uh, it's very protective. Uh, it protects the gear underneath, uh, so oftentimes people are wearing very expensive bionics, and so obviously this is a protection for that, and that is actually the reason why these covers are also paid by insurance, for instance, in the U.S., it's because of the protection. Uh, it's extremely uh, durable. People are using this uh, nowadays in the, in the gym and um, all kind of activities. Um, uh, people have to be careful maybe that the colors can scratch, of course, but sometimes people even like that to have few few scars on the covers. And um, so it's maybe not that bad. Uh, and it can always be repainted. Uh, it's symmetrical. Uh, that is what uh, the smartphone takes care of. It takes also pictures of the, the, the sound lag. So, so, and it's uh, very easy to fit um, onto the cover, onto the prosthetics. Um, uh, it's very intuitive uh, from that point of view, and um, and it stays on uh, very well. I mean, it's uh, whatever you're doing. I mean, it is uh, rock solid uh, sitting on your on your um, prosthetics. We introduced, like I said, the 2019 uh, the sockets, and um, that was uh, intended just to kind of we called it match mate. Um, it felt very natural to to finish the work, continue with the socket. And um, and uh, we uh, have that both for trans people and trans femoral. Um, we have it in three formats. Uh, Mirror Me is uh, just the socket itself. And then you can extend it down, you know, as one piece all the way down to the foot, uh, to the third version here called Total Reflection. And we do it both for above knee and below knee. Uh, people can sometimes integrate uh, tracking. Um, fitness uh, uh, sensors in there or whatever. I mean, it's obviously easy to do with 3D printing. And um, it's like that, it provides this kind of complete look. Uh, it is uh, obviously gives you even a better shape than just doing the cover. Um, especially when you're talking about the baloney, as you can see it, it uh, now is a complete match. And um, and it's easy. What, how we do it? We actually today we just basically scan existing sockets. We are not yet working directly uh, with the stump, uh, but we basically um, replicate existing sockets as they are out there. Uh, next stage is definitely to go more towards doing the first socket, the test socket. Uh, but we aren't there yet. But um, soon to come. Uh, we have tested uh, the socket uh, according to the ISO standard. It is interesting with prosthetics that we actually don't need C marking or any of that kind, but, or, but of course, for safety reasons, we, we have to do it this way. And um, yeah, so with, with that said, I, I just want to, uh, I, I might jump in again, maybe after the presentation with uh, after Katarina presents. But uh, I'd like to give it now just over to uh, uh, Katarina, please. Uh, thank you, Ather. Uh, and uh, now I'll just see if you can see my presentation. Can you see yeah. my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Now, now I can see. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So my name is my name is Katarina Mard Lovenadler, and I'm a um, orthopedic uh, orthopedical engineer, uh, certified prosthetist, orthotist. So I'll take a bit from a clinical perspective. Uh, so I will talk about the uniqueers, the users, um, the the way, the unique way, the value chain, and the partnership. 
And uh, just as Aether, I've been working for Auser with Life Without Limitation. Uh, I have also been working for IKEA to create a better everyday life for the many people. And uh, I was also part of, I was the VP of product development and supply, and I was also part of the expansion into India. And that was when I met Aether again, and we did a collaboration when it comes to 3D printed devices for gaming uh, within IKEA. So that took me then back to medical device industry where I come from, and I'm now the, the executive VP of Unique. And um, I wanted to start to talk about the uniqueers because it all starts with the one using the device. It's to understand their daily life. That is what it helping us. And we see it more like a philosophy with our universe. We also do a lot of research because what is clear is that, of course, function is the first thing you think about because you are replacing something that was lost. But it is very important to understand that using those devices every day, they have to mirror your personality. It has to be part of yourself. And the psychological effect of being part of co-creating and personalize your device that you are going to wear every day is very important, equally important as the function. And Aya will, uh, will help us to understand that even better at the end of this presentation. So we have many uniques, uh, where Arya is one. Uh, it's our pioneer in India, and he will speak a bit more about that. But we have many people all around the world, like Travis in the US, he expressed that I want to be me. We have Maria from Denmark. She don't want to hide it because she feels that is cheating, but she wants it to be about her, her pers personality rather than her disability. And she has achieved that with the unique covers. And we have Deborah from US who want to be pretty and want her leg to be pretty as well. So we have many of those stories and that is what we're building our devices on. But they are not only young people. We have a lot of people over the age of, of 60 that is wearing the covers, actually more than 50%. And many of them also want to have nice designs that shows their personality. But of course you can also have a plain version with a skin tone if you want that and only have the, your anatomic shape. So I will go a bit into the way we are producing those devices. Aether was into it in the beginning. It all starts with the intuitive app. And that is a digitalization where we use biometric technology for easy selection and capturing of data for true personalization. And this one, the user can download themselves and look into the different design options, the patterns, the colors, the textures, and be ready even before going to the clinic. At the clinic, you do the measurement and the photos and the scanning using the app. So it's very inexpensive in the way that you can use your phone. You don't have to invest in an expensive scanner. And when we then design the cover, we're using generative design. Uh, it's algorithms and a part of artificial intelligence for faster processing and improved accuracy. So we have a library of all components available from any suppliers on the market. And we have data points of different anatomic shapes since 2014. This means that what took maybe eight hours in beginning to render takes less than 30 minutes today. So we have, with the data points we have, generated speed in finding the perfect match to your anatomic shape but also important, a perfect match to the components that you have beneath. And then, as we said, we started with SLS printers, but we have now moved over to what we feel is the, the best on the market right now, which is the multi-jet fusion. Uh, and that is uh, the to use the 3D printing know-how and the digital factory that we have for five years. We now see with the MGF multi-jet fusion printers that we can do it with better accuracy, with higher speed, with better durability, and also important, the sustainability, where you can recycle 85% uh, of the material used and there are no harmful chemicals in the material, which is very important for us and the users. And then we distribute and make it accessible for everyone. And we are today uh, working with over 30 countries and 700 clinics. 
And as I said, we started 2014 using scanners, but in uh, already 2015, we developed the first app to use for scanning the device. And we are continuously upgrading uh, those uh, apps to be even more intuitive, making sure that you take the right photos in the right angle and that instructs you how to do it. And we will also, we have it now on the App Store, uh, downloadable for free. And we are now for next year looking into the Android version. So this is how it works. Uh, you download it from the Apple Store. You easily select and decide the colors that you want. And when you have that, the patient and the user can do themselves from home and they can even email their prosthetist what they prefer. So they are ready when they come to the clinic and start to do, to take the measurements and the photos. And as you see in the app, it tells you exactly how to take the measurement, how to take the photos, how the alignment should be. And you steer it into having the perfect alignment when you take the photos. That is then automatically uploaded to our server and we will start the rendering of the cover. But the good thing is also that you can monitor this on the app because you can then see what you have ordered and you can see how it will look like on your leg before you confirm, okay, that means we have very few claims and returns because you have already seen how it will look like on your leg uh, before you approve it and we go to production. And the process is that you take the measurements and the photos with the app. And then uh, if you have a transtibial, for the transfemoral, the above knee, you only need photos and measurements. When you have a transtibial, uh, you have a socket. And to get the perfect match to the socket, we need a bit more data points. So that means that you do a video still with your iPhone or your iPad. And what we are serving you with then is a socket, a sleeve, which makes it possible to identify all the data points needed to make accuracy in the fitting. So you have all this in a kit that we send to the clinics and they can then just scan with the phone. But the good thing with this is also, of course, that because of the digital uh, technology that we are using with the biometric scanning using a phone, you can be anywhere. So it uh, is actually possible to do remote ordering. And in those time of a pandemic situation, that has helped us and the users and the clinicians a lot because sometimes the patient were not able to come to the clinic, but then they can actually take the photos and measurements with their own phones at home. They can send it to the clinician who can approve it and then send it further to us. So this makes it possible to make it accessible for anyone anywhere around the world. And the reordering is very easy because we have traceability. We have a serial number on the covers. So if a patient wants a new cover, we only need a serial number. They don't need to come back and do measurements and so on if they haven't changed the alignment of the components underneath. So to summary, uh, the generative design, what we do is that we are using the app, the data from the app, from the photos, from the measurements, and then we render the picture in our software. And because of all the data points we have, as I said, it has gone from eight hours years ago down to 30 minutes to render the cover. But I think maybe the best thing for the clinician is that you can then see the mock-up. You can see exactly how the cover will look like on your leg. And that could differ sometimes because you have different components underneath. So sometimes, for instance, uh, the components themselves are wider in the ankle uh, than your anatomic sound limb. And then, it, of course, it's important for the patient to understand this, that it's impossible to be uh, more narrow than the com components beneath the cover. But this is something that you can show and you can then, uh, if you want to change they can give us information and there are also different options if you want to have the knee joint open or covered. And that we will show alternatives and the patient can be fine with knowing exactly how it will look like before we go to production. And the material we are using is polyamide PA12 because it's a robust thermoplastic that produces high density pieces of strong structure. And it's also ideal for complex assemblies like this and watertight application, which is important for us. And it's biocompatibility certification for it. It complies with USP class one to six. 
and US FDA guidance for intact skin surface device, which is very important for reimbursement in many countries. And as Aetha said before, is uh, the socket that we are producing is ISO tested for 125 kilos. More than 3 million cycles and steps is suitable for K1, 2 and 3, although we have K4, the highest sports activities, uses using our covers without any problem. But we recommend it for, uh, to be suitable for moderate impact. And finally, what we believe uh, a lot in within Unique is democratic design. And what democratic design means to us and the users that we're working with is that you don't compromise on any of the aspects of design from a user perspective. So, of course, the function is really important that you can use your knee joint exactly as the sound limb and that you can have access to the components and it protects the components underneath. But you also have the form and you have almost uh, uh, unlimited possibilities it's only your imagination uh, that puts the limit on the form uh, and the look on the device, which is shown now that the psychological effect of that, you get more attached to it if you can choose your own design and show your personality, which means that you will wear the device a lot better. And that, of course, means that you will have a better clinical outcome. Uh, but the quality is also very high. So many are today using foam cosmesis, which is not durable, it changes in shape, it absorbs moisture and is not hygienic. And every time you need to change the component, you need to cut up the cosmetics and redo it. With the cover, with the hard magnets we have, you can just easily take it on and off, click, and then you can access the component and change those. And from a sustainability point of view, of course you don't have any waste because you just print what you need and what you use. And the material we are using is uh, free from harmful chemicals and is recyclable to 85%. And because of not having to invest in an expensive scanner that you can use what you have, your phone or your iPad, is very affordable and can be accessible anywhere around the world. So a bit about our partners. Uh, we are today working with over 700 clinics uh, in over 30 countries, and we are adding new countries every second week. And as we have said, we are here now, and Aya is our first patient, uh, our first uniquer in India, but we are already getting attraction uh, and, uh, and are discussing with key partners in India to make this available for the many people in India as well. And we are supporting the clinics uh, with, of course, both catalogs and displays and posters, we are supporting with remote ordering and reordering and traceability. We are supporting with a free of charge app, but we also have scanners. We do online seminars to train all the clinicians. And we also do Facebook live stream interviews with users to tell their stories, not only about the cover uh, or the sockets that we produce, but actually about the story in how you take your life back and control of your own life and can show your personality and live a full life again. So uh, to summarize, it's about the stylish and personalized prosthetic wares con constantly redesigned. Uh, it is the important thing that we in every step include the users, the global community of uh, the unique devices and that the unique way is really what makes unique <laughs> unique. And that is the digital process includes selection, fitting, design, 3D printing and shipping globally. And that we are working with the users and the clinics around the world that is in the forefront of rethinking the industry. And uh, as I said before, uh, the most important people in this process is the users. And I'm so happy that we have Arya with us today, the first user in India and he will speak a bit uh, from his perspective. So over to you, I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me correctly? Yes. Well, yeah. that's good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to proceed my, to share my screen. Okay. 
Okay. So, well, I'm Jordi, I'm the CEO from Excalade. Uh, Excalade was born in 2015 uh, with the idea to to change the well the, the the traditional methods about plaster thermoplastics and orthotic systems. Uh, so we become from a large experience in term in software design and 3D printing uh, hardware and software. Uh, and well, that was the key point to start engaging this this business. So Excalade, it's we can define it in, in three different areas. I will put you a, a video presentation. So we start with uh, the different kind of professionals in the sector, traumas, orthotic, uh, surgicals, every kind of people that is involved in this area to try to find the key points to design something to solve the problems because from the traditional methods. Uh, so what we did is to change uh, the way how to make the mobilizations, trying to solve. Uh, well, right now we are solving the 96% of the of the problems becomes from the traditional methods. Uh, and well, uh, this is what uh, we are doing right now. So in the three areas that we are involved, the first area is uh, I'm going to put some image not to have this. Here, I can put this, okay. So in the first area we have product, in the second area we have software, in the third area we have production. In the first area that's product that, uh, well, it's the final orthotic. So today we have upper and, the most common in upper and lower extremities covered and these designs are made to solve, like I said before, the most common problems are become from the traditional methods in social terms and in medical terms. In social terms, well, like everybody can see that you can swim, you can take a shower, hygienic, bathe, uh, with uh, commodity, transpiration, etc. But the most important part is in the medical field. So we cannot produce ulcers, infections, uh, swelling process, uh, irritation in the skin. Uh, in terms of post-surgical uh, methods, uh, infections in the scars or other more important uh, infections. Uh, and for sure, the the it's hundred percent designed for for the anatomical part of the passion with the specific the right specifications in positioning from the practitioner okay so we he, also the the product give us the possibility to start working with the patient since the first day that it's something that today is not possible with using plaster or thermoplastics uh, because they need to remove the plaster or the thermoplastics to start uh, working with the passion. So what we do is to Im, in, in, include in the design some windows when the physiotherapist can start uh, making electrotherapy, magnetotherapy, and la hot lamps uh, of well, uh, to to maintain the muscle mass and and engage the 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 bone uh, solidification process. So at the end of the day, this is traduced in faster recovery. Uh, more or less, every patient is different, but we are uh, we have a, a scale up by more or less uh, between five to fifty percent of recovery faster. So that is a big factor in 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 terms of of the product. For sure, we are using all the materials. It's certified, ISO, CFDAs, etc. 
Uh, in the other term, we have the software, and we consider that it's our core business company of the company because it's what gives us the possibility to generate our business model. So the software it's made it in three areas. I will show you some video of how it works. Uh, for example, uh, arm scan. So we are using uh, an iPad with a structure sensor integrated. Uh, in a couple of months, we are not going to use a structure sensor anymore. But uh, we use that technology because it's the cheapest technology in the market. Since 2015, we have been tested more than 20 scanners since $200,000 a scanner as this one. And we realized that all the scanners, they are using the, sa the same kind of technology that it's red light and uh, technologies. And all these uh, scanners has the same problems regarding the light, amb ambient light, color of skin, reflections, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to stop here. Uh, so with a scanner at $200,000, you have a margin of error around 300 millimeters. And with a structure sensor, you can have half centimeter or one centimeter of error. So we realized that we need to generate something new. So in the software, we can separate also in three areas. We have the scanning software, we have the identification software, and we have the builder. All of the all of three are based in machine learning, deep learning algorithms, and artificial intelligence technology. The scanning software, what does? It's solving real time the problem of the optical scanners, including the structure sensors. So uh, real time are connected with, with the cloud and it's correcting in every position the, the errors in terms of light, uh, color skin, dimensions, distance, everything. So right now today we have uh, 0 0.5 millimeters of delay. So it's very good for us because I mean, one or two millimeters for us is, is not acceptable. So we, we, we had to, to do that. And uh, like you see, uh, we are available to make super fast scanning. Like this scanner that maybe takes uh, seven seconds, something like that. A leg, maybe you can take 10, 12 seconds of a scanning. And uh, this will be the first the first process. The second process is when you have the scanner done, like you can see in the screen, we are going to proceed with identifier. Okay, with identifier does is take the scanner and check where are all the parts from the anatomy that we scan. In this case, where are the fingers, where are the the the, the nails, where are the wrist, where are the elbow, if it is in a scar, where is the scar, angulation, all this stuff. Okay, this uh, process takes more or less uh, with 30 seconds, something like that. I'm going to go a little bit. Okay, okay. so that stops. Oh, wait, I, I take it to... Okay, so what identify... Sorry, I'm going to stop the image. Okay, so when the identifier stops, we, right now we have all the information of the anatomy, okay? And also we show some, uh, some slicing cuts uh, for, well, this is important for us because the professionals can check that the virtual dimensions versus real dimensions are correct. And at the same time, we need to, this is some part that it should have to be to get the medical device certification. This is a medical device certification with uh, all the ISOs, C and FDA approvals. And well, we have to have this screen to show at this point. When we have that, we go to the third part of the software that it's where it involves artificial intelligence. Uh, we get this information, we get the mesh information, and we proceed to build the mobilization from zero. For your knowledge, 
we don't use CAD softwares, we don't use systems like Voleans, extrusions, or all these kind of methods that all the CAD softwares use. We generate our own 3D environment using uh, ray, uh, rays to, to impact with areas and build from zero, from point to point, the demobilizations. Because from the other side, you, it's impossible to get effecti effectiveness uh, in terms of, of, of success. Uh, we, we tried it before and we had 43, 44% of success of the cases. Right now we are in 97, 98% of success. So you press another button. Uh, well, this is showing the anthropometry. You press the builder and here, uh, before to start building, we give another tool that the doctor or the practitioner can choose the offset. If we used to put the offset in zero, zero, so that many fits, uh, but he, they can choose if they want a little bit tight or a little bit loosey. This can be choose because every, every injury is different. Uh, they can have a swelling process or not, or it's not the same like a broken bone, a muscle disease than a chronic pathology. So this is another thing that I didn't tell you before. We are, uh, with the same system, we are covering broken bones, muscle injuries, chronic pathologies, deformations. All the, all the areas are covered from the same system that we have. So in this case, we choose zero, zero and proceed to build, okay? This process takes more or less around 60 seconds, okay? So I'm going to go a little bit Run okay, so that well we can put a little bit here. Let's well, say the loading, everything it's cloud computing, so it's you have to be connected to in internet. Uh, so once it's done, well we show the immobilization. Okay, like this said something feels magic. This means a lot of processing in cloud system. But is this what the goal that we have? Because it, our idea was to introduce this massively in the market. So the way to introduce this massively in the market is to close the experience of CAD 3D printing to the doctor professional without having knowledge of that. So this is why we make this so easy. At the end of the, the day, this is 10 seconds of scanners, two press click buttons, and you have the mobilization done. So here you have the option to choose color, choose color over in color, that is a closer system that we have patent. And well, you can change the offset if you want, and it's going to build again. So once this is done, it's simple. You have this done and sent to production. We have another button here below. Uh, I don't know if it's going to see in this video, but the, this, well, yeah, we can we can change the parts. If you can see there is everything, it's correct. And sent to production, okay? It's that green button that you can see in, on the right. So, okay, so this is the software process. Since you enter data of the patient here in the app, that put the name, measurements, the, well, I, I mean, height, weight, uh, where I come from, some little data. After that, they choose the mobilization they want to use, if it's an arm, leg, knee, whatever, and they start this scanning process and this process, okay? After that, sent to production, in this product, it's sent to the cloud. Uh, all this process takes uh, I used to take for myself with experience three, four, three minutes, something like that. Uh, some new user takes five minutes in every case, okay? And after that, this, this is done. This is in the cloud, okay? So what means in the cloud? It means that the product is done. And this comes the third part, the third stage of the escalate, that it's production. So I'm going to... Put another video. Uh, I'm going to stop here. So in terms of production, we have different areas. Uh, one, 
was the problem when we started in 2015 but well, we we are 20 years in in the 3d market so we know all the big players like 3d systems strategies uh, carbon 3d hp well we help hp in developing the printer uh, the pa12 was developed for us and another glass uh, uh, company uh, so we we know a lot of people uh, next to 3d blah 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 so we we realized that for us the 3d printing like it's think about it was not or uh, or ideal process because 3d printing was created to make little production uh, to substitute some ter- some some injection molding so our idea was to create one immobilization as fast as possible as cheap, as cheap as possible and that was something that any one of the companies was available to give us because including hp uh, the, uh, the the product price for unit was around 60 dollars for unit and in terms of orthotic this is not available because this have to be a solution for everybody so the way to do that was to develop our own printer and our own resins okay so we make a partnership with the company we take uh, we took a base of a printer that we like that and we start developing in terms of firmware and hardware the printer and also in resin that is a big point because without the correct composition you cannot uh, do it we are above uh, well, partners and we are doing that together so we develop uh, a resin technology uh, right now we are the fastest printing technology worldwide uh, there is nobody that we can print faster than us we can print uh, 30 centimeters tall in around 40 minutes time and with a co- super cheap cost I-, I mean we are talking that we can put a kit uh, of 3d printer wash unit cure unit everything in place around three thousand dollars with the production of high five six thousand units a year uh, so this is a huge production that they can do and a cost of each product between five to fifteen dollars cost okay so that it's competing directly with plaster thermoplastics and orthotic because uh, orthotic well everybody knows the prices can go behind 30 to 400 or that's at one thousand dollars in plaster or thermoplastics well most of the people thought that plaster it's one or two dollars cost and thermoplastics it's five six dollars cost but this is not the real cost the real cost is you have to add the time of the doctor the time of the nursery the time of the room the time of the cleaning of the room and equipment stock everything so all this cost it's around 20 40 dollars cost for unit so we are competing directly in the market in terms of a speed in terms of pricing okay this is a time lapse of uh, how we print okay and it's like you see it's a uh, lcd technology a little bit different but it's based in lcd technology okay so uh what re- coming back with the with the with the product that we i'm going to close this going back to the idea uh when we you finish the scan the scan it's it's a cloud when we make also it's computing the scan we generate the g code with all the parameters exactly to put in the printer so the process of the doctor is download it take it if you have in LAN, send to the printer directly otherwise usb put in the printer put play that's it the only knowledge that they have to have is how to put the resin in how to take the piece off how to, if they have to polish a little bit and that's it i mean it's super easy simple integration process for that we are available to introduce all the systems autonomous in every hospital because for us to make one immobilization or to make 1000 it's the same doesn't matter we have a super scale up business model 
and uh, this is what is 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 the process. So in terms of how the process works right now, we want we change it a little bit the workflow in the hospitals and in the orthotics, because normally if you are a practitioner, you receive a passion the passion with the X-ray. You check the X-ray and you know what you have to do if there is a uh, as, uh, a broken bone with this plasma directly to surgery, but if it, otherwise you have to put a plaster or a thermoplastic. So this doctor or nursery is going to spend, spend with the patient 30, 40 minutes after the patient leaves and takes another one. So this generates a queue. What we offer, it's different in terms of the workflow. So you receive the patient, you have the X-ray, say, okay, take the iPad with the Exclite application, check the immobilization, a scan, make the process. That means five minutes with the patient, set the patient leaves to the waiting room. And when the immobilization is done, call him one, two minutes, put it back, leave. So at the end of the day, the doctor is spending 10 minutes in the patient with much more efficient than it's doing with the normal systems. So it's not just about new product. It's a new methodology, the code to integrate this in the hospitals. Uh, and this was the idea of Excalade to generate new business models for new products for B2B uh, related in trauma and orthotic at the end to engage and make better life to the patients. For that, it's Excalade Easy Life. And well, that will be the fast resume of what Excalade does. Thanks for your time. Well, thank you so much, Jody. Uh, it was a pleasure looking at the insights that you gave. Uh, thank you so much for that again. Uh, uh, do we have Prashant here? I am not so sure if we have Prashant here. Uh, how yeah, about I'm here. Uh, Dr. Ajay? Oh, you can. Uh, over to you now, Prashant, if that's okay. Sorry. So, Prashanta, would you be uh, willing to present? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, hi, guys. Uh, this is Prashant. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of an Ali Foundation. So, uh, Inali is an um, NGO that's a non-profit that works for people with certain upper limb disability. Uh, let me uh, show you my screen. Can you see my screen? Mm, not yet. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Okay. You might want to just unpresent and present again. That way it might work. Sorry? Uh, you can try presenting again. Yeah. I think there's some issue like uh, now you can see it. I can't see. You. Uh, how about other guys? Can you see his screen? And uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some issue. It's like. Yeah, Prashant, did you press the monitor button? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, let me just see if I try and share mine and then you can try sharing yours. That might fix it. Let's see if that works. Uh, you can see mine, right? Can you see it now? Uh, 
Anyone? Can you see my screen? Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, and, and I think there's some technical issue we might be having. Uh, so how about uh, we go over to Dr. Ajay and uh, he can present and then probably you can try and present after him. Dr. Right. Ajay, are you there? Uh, AJ, uh, Dr. AJ has uh, some technical uh, problems, so um, he might not he might not be able to join at all. Okay, okay, right. So, uh, Ms. Prashanta, I think you can try and present again if that works. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm not sure. It's not working, actually. Okay. Uh, there's some issue. Do you want to try? Do you want to try from any other device? Yeah, uh, let me check with some uh, other. Yeah. Um, so, Jody, just in the meanwhile, uh, you know, uh, Prashant is trying to set everything up. So I was wondering, you said in, in your presentation that, uh, you know, uh, 30 centimeters of 3D printing could be done within 40 minutes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Jody, can you hear me? I think he's on mute. I guess. You're mute, actually. Yeah. you're mute. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. Don't worry, Don't worry about it. Yeah. We can hear it. We can see it now, Mr. Sean. Yeah, Mr. Sean, are you able to share your screen? There's some issue with my screen. Give me a second. I'm just trying. Sure, no worries. Uh, so while Prashant is trying to sort things up, uh, so Katrina, I just had a small question. Uh, so you said uh, in your presentation that uh, you have an, an exhaustive library of all, uh, you know, the accessories that. Uh, patients might be needing and the PNOs might be needing. So when you say extensive, right, so does that cover each and every company that is out there in the market? Uh, almost. Of course, the suppliers are creating new components. So what, what we have is the tube, the knee joint, the different prosthetic feeds available. And as soon as there are new out on the market, we get the SLS files from the supplier. So we add them into our library. Even the osteointegration, as you saw, the one that is actually attached to the skeleton. Uh, so that is, of course, what, what is the point that you have all those components available in the library so you get the perfect fit for the cover. Uh, 
uh, around the tube and the knee joint and have the right um, the right, right surface um, and trim line for the foot to be able to function properly. That's amazing. I think that that kind of uh, service for the end user is quite something. Right. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. I think uh, Mr. Prashant is on again. Yeah. So uh, oh. I hope you can see my screen now, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, fine. So, yeah. So, yeah, hi, I'm Prashant. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Inali Foundation, as I said. Inali uh, works for people with certain upper limb disability, uh, mostly for those people who are from rural areas and who don't have uh, proper disability. So, uh, Inali uh, is uh, set up in 2018, but before going to that, i just like to give you a small introduction what we do and uh, that's a small video about inali main kartik daiya chalti hui train se gir gaya tha so mostly this is in uh, hindi our local language but you can see the subtitles these are some feedback from our patients like how they are doing with their hands and they are actually explaining what sort of life they had before getting this hand and what was their expression when they got their life so you basically can go through the subtitles uske baad mera ye jo wrist ka left wrist cut cut diya gaya tha us samay gaon mein dhan ki kheti khatam hoti hai pual aur bajri hota hai jo ki wo gaay bhais ko khilaya jata hai usko barik barik kaatte hain laga rakhe hain katta wo ek ka ek andar aise rakha tha baad dusre se kara tha wo masi speed mein chal raha tha wo andar gaya जोर से चिल्ला उसने उतारा मुझे सब करो लेकिन वो इतने छोटे छोटे टुकड़े में कटा उसको हम इकट्ठा भी नहीं कर पाते जैसे हाथ नहीं थे बहुत लोग सोचते हैं कि बारे में ये कर पाएगा कि नहीं कर पाएगा तो मैं मेरा भी इंटरव्यू लेते थे काम के लिए मैं जिसे मतलब एक हाथ से जितना काम कर देता था दिखा देता था उटनी and just a moment of arm uh, and it would cost 24 lakh in every 10th minute there is one entry more than 500000 people lost their limbs every year and 85% of them are still living without any solution and i think it's a big problem and i believe technology has the power to solve this problem and that's what we are trying to do to inali foundation the reason for which we on the way i found a person with a missing limb and i just try to approach him and ask him if he can come to my place and we can fit him up and his father said no they can't come so when i just asked them why don't uh, you come to jaipur if you are getting it for free they said like if i come to jaipur and leave my job for a day my family have to sleep without uh, food so that was the point i thought like there are many people uh, for whom it's really difficult just because of their social and economic condition to reach us that was the big reason for which we thought uh, let's start some campaign and reach them who can't reach us so we started with mumbai there are many 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 uh, people who are in need we have to reach them and let's make them smile and give them the satisfaction and have those satisfaction inside us 12 saal baad maine pani apne haathon se piya isse hum likh bhi sakte hain isse hum padh bhi sakte hain agar ye nahi hai to isse to kar sakte hain so uh, basically uh, that's one uh, introduction to inali now so what we are doing and why we are doing so currently if we talk about india every year more than 45000 people lost their arms uh, 
out of which 85% are those who cannot afford even they are not aware of such solutions and today most of this prosthetic arm range uh, from i could say uh, 10000 us dollars to 120000 us dollars and for a country like india it's really uh, unaffordable solution for the most so uh, i could say there are uh, many other companies who are working on such solutions and providing solutions but they are highly expensive like um, autobog b bionic uh, obviously their products are to a different quality range but when it comes to india we are not able to uh, have them because of various reasons like we don't have health insurance uh, like company like france and all and uh, getting so uh, this arms become re- really difficult for us so this is why uh, we come up with an idea why not to make something which people can afford um, or maybe uh, we can have somebody who can actually help these people to get this hand so uh, our purpose was to bring a potential difference in the life of people by creating affordable but uh, advanced assistive tech solutions uh, we are currently we are focused on uh, mostly on upper limbs uh, so giving you an introduction uh, we are in uh, a non profit uh, established in 2018 till date we have given more than 2000 hands Uh, col- uh collaborated with major ngo across country uh awarded by several major corporates uh, and industry bodies in our country and we have people uh, with rehab council of india who are working with us now uh, the way it was started was with enable uh, arms so in 2013 i was a research fellow with enable foundation in new york where i was like uh, working with mr john shoul who uh works for uh kids with certain upper limb disability in us but when we look at us uh, 3d printing has changed the complete background uh for prosthetics it had made easy um and a very simple solutions for people with missing limbs especially upper limbs because uh when it comes to lower limb 3d printing was uh considered as not durable or maybe so then um other reason uh, where it was not considered so good but when it was uh, compared to upper limb 3d printing was something which brought uh, as a miracle so uh, this enable arm started in 2013 by john shaw uh, with th- with the use of 3d printing but uh, if you look at this arm this arms are very much uh, uh, good for western cultures but when it comes to country like india where we are more concerned about the looks and the how the hand is looking because you have to go in a certain group of people and most of this amputee don't want uh, anyone to recognize that they are wearing an artificial arm so uh, we try to make this arms more look like a, a a human hand so these are the different arm that was started uh in 2013 uh, by enable foundation with uh, some other um uh, foundations for, who started working with 3d printing especially this arm started creating a miracle for kids where uh, you can see the joy and face on the face of the kids when they can hold a bottle they can drink with their own uh, hands uh and most important these arms were free for them they can print it and um, the major uh, place where 3d printing uh, made a huge difference was uh, as a child grows his arm size grow and he need to be changed and replaced at every uh, second year so uh, that becomes difficult for a uh, person or father or a mother to replace a arm at every single uh, year because it would be a really ex- expensive matter so where 3d printing brought a, a huge um, i could say a uh, role where you don't need to spend much you can actually go print your file and make your arm and many countries are started doing uh, kits for by their own they are printing their arm for their own uh, but when it comes to indian culture 30% of the people are concerned over the functionality but 70% of the people are concerned about the aesthetics and the weight how the hand is looking how people are going to react when they see Uh, oh you are wearing a prosthetic arm uh, so bad uh, i'm so pity so uh, can we change this mentality can we change this thought and this is how we come up with the nali arm so uh, it's uh, it's not a complete 3d printed but yes uh, it has 3d printing inside it 
where we have the finger molded with 3D printing. Uh, we have certain gears and all which are 3D printed. Apart from that, there is a combination. It's a hybrid version, I could say, uh, with a metal inside it with 3D printing. But more than that, uh, we made it more look like a real arm uh, in terms of aesthetics. You can see uh, it is made up out of this silicon gloves uh, where uh, a person can feel the nails, um, he can feel the skin. So it's a silicon gives more um, appearance like a real arm. Now, uh, the aesthetic and the lightweight was the big reason for the success of the Inali arm. Um, most of the people uh, who used to wear this arm um, when it was not 3D printed, there was only one company who was making this arm that was Elimco. So Elimco used to make this mechanical arm where, which are very heavy for the patient to use it. Apart from that, they do have some straps and belts uh, which make it a real hard for the patient to use it. Now, uh, we came up with certain methods where uh, the socket part, uh, which we have made, uh, is made up of uh, HDPE, but still we are uh, going to uh, move for 3D printed socket. And uh, based out of the presentation I've seen uh, before, I feel that we can uh, have a great collaboration in that also. So uh, we do have a variance of uh, gloves and all where you uh, can see the skin. There's a certain sort of glove. Um, it's a PVC gloves or a, a maybe a silicon gloves. Now, how the hand work uh, could be explained with this uh, video. In 2016, I was working on robotics. I came to know that every year, more than 40,000 people lost their upper limbs and 85% of them are still living without any solution. This was really shocking for me and I thought what I'm doing is not a project. It is something which could change someone's life. In 2016, I started with 3D printing, but with time, I created your design and the recent one works with the signal from your brain. Whenever we think to move our fingers, our brain sends some signals. The arm has some sensors inside it, which actually takes those signals from the hand and give it to the processor and which make it move. The hand has the capacity to lift a weight up to 10 kgs. Apart from that, the hand is actually made up of silicon glass, so it gives an cosmetic appeal for a person. I am Prashant Gade. I'm the founder of Finale Founder. So, uh, if I go back for a second, and now if you can see this image, there are two different arms this guy is wearing. So, the left arm is the Nali arm, and the right arm is made by a company named Alimco, which is a company by Indian government. Now, if you could see, uh, this is a complete mechanical arm, which needs a belt to uh, fix this arm to another shoulder. Uh, and it's very heavy for the person to use it. Uh, apart from that, there is an elbow joint, uh, which is extremely heavy and uh, uh, more than five to six kilograms. That's a weight of one single arm. So let's make it more uh, hard for a patient to use. Um, when it comes to an Ali, um, we do have a sensor based arm where uh, a person don't need another arm to operate the hand. You can just think about it to move the finger and start. Take a pill for a person. I'm Prashant Gale. I'm the founder of Finale Foundation. So uh, uh, the other application that we were thinking of uh, using 3D printing in prosthetic would be uh, 3D printed lower limbs that uh, I hope like uh, Katrina was talking about uh, 3D printed partial prosthesis, which is the most required part, I could say, because in India, I could say there are 90 percent of the cases of electric shock and about uh, out of which four to five percent of people are missing their uh, fingers and but still they don't have any uh, solutions uh, currently in India. So 3D printing will be playing a, a, a good role in, in prosthesis and then 3D printed prosthesis for animal. So this is what I was talking where Katrina was talking about uh, lower limbs, how we can actually do it. So we are also planning to uh, work on 3D printed lower limbs. Apart from that, uh, 3D printed partial fingers. So uh, there are a lot of people who are actually uh, facing a lot of difficulties when they have a missing finger, especially in India, because we do have a lot of uh, factory accidents. So this is one uh, that we are trying to do right now. And then uh, coming to uh, 3D printed uh, animal prosthesis, so which will be starting uh, mostly in, uh, by next year. 
uh, what sort of recognition till uh, date we have got like uh, we have got uh, recognition through an you know, in Infosys Social Innovation Award, James Tyson Award, uh, NASCOM Social Innovation Award. Uh, till date, we have given more than uh, 2,000 limbs, uh, and especially for free across India. There are many people from uh, outside India who have come to us to get these limbs. Uh, what is something? bio sensors that have been used so far has some sort of problems like aging uh with age your um signals become weak and it becomes hard for this bio sensors to pick up the signals so the hand that we have uh, does not take signal from your uh, just from your uh, skin uh it takes from your muscles movement also so uh, most of these patients who have the aging pro- problem can be solved apart from that in india as i said 90% of the people are uh, facing the uh, this sort of amputation just because of electric shock and in case of electric shock you have to do skin grafting but because of skin, skin grafting uh, the signal intensity become weak and uh, this pe- people does not get the hand just because of the skin grafting apart from that most of the uh, arms are very heavy but the nali arm is lightweight uh, nearly about 500 grams and can lift up to 10 kg uh i could say most affordable electronic arm across the globe uh till date we have as i said given 2000 arm and the cost of one arm is less than uh 150 um uh, it lasts for 48 hours with one charge um uh, it requires about a 15 minutes to fit a arm and um even the uh, training process uh currently our mission is to uh give about 10000 lives uh currently we started a campaign uh with an uh, crowdfunding web page mila uh, where we have more than uh, 40 uh, million views 1 million likes and more than 900 uh, 900000 people uh, shared our videos uh we have raised a good amount of uh, funds to uh, reach our target and uh, this is something ek lady hamare paas mein aayi aur humne unko haath lagaye jaise baaki patient ko hum haath lagate hain तो वो दो मिनट तक उनके हाथ की तरफ देखती रही और वो रोने लगी उन्होंने कहा अब मैं मेरी बेटी के बाल बना सकती हूँ जब आप किसी के लिए कुछ करते हैं और उसका असर देखते हैं कि वो इंसान की खुश उसके चेहरे पर देख रही है वो ऐसा होता है कि शायद आपको भगवान मिल गए मेरी एक्सपेक्टेशन के काफी उल्टा था इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज क्योंकि मुझे लगता था वहां पे वो आविष्कार होगा उसकी बातें होंगी पर ना वहां आविष्कार था ना उसकी बातें थी बात सिर्फ एक थी कि आप वो 40 नंबर कैसे लाएंगे आपको एग्जाम कैसे पास करनी है और आपको जॉब कैसे मिले तब तक कुछ दिमाग में था ही नहीं कि मेरे को लोगों के लिए कुछ बनाना है या करना है मेरे को तो अपना प्रोजेक्ट करना है जिस इंसान को मैं पहली बार मिला वो छोटी सी बच्ची थी सात साल की बचपन से दोनों हाथ में बस मेरे को लगा कि मुझे कुछ करना चाहिए मैंने एक कंपनी को अप्रोच किया और कहा कि एक बच्ची है उसके लिए दो हाथ चाहिए उस कंपनी ने अगले दिन मुझे चौबीस लाख रुपए मांगे तो सोचा और ढूंढता हूँ ऐसे कितने लोग हैं जिसको ऐसे हाथ की जरूरत है तो इंडिया में सिर्फ हर साल चालीस हजार से भी ज्यादा लोगों के हाथ कटते हैं और 85% लोग ऐसे हैं जिनके पास कोई सलूशन रीजन वो अफोर्ड नहीं कर सकते तो मन में लगा कि या, शायद ये वो चीज है जो मुझे वो आंसर दे दे कि मेरे लाइफ का पर्पस क्या है हमने एक ऐसा हाथ बनाया जो कहीं भी और किसी को भी इजीली लग सके आज कहीं ना कहीं और भी बहुत सारे ऐसे लोग होंगे जिनको ऐसे हाथ की बहुत जरूरत है हम गांव गांव जा के ऐसे लोगों को मदद दे सकते हैं उनको वो हाथ दे के उसको उम्मीद दे सकते हैं कि तुम तुम्हारी लाइफ में कुछ कर सकते हो और उन तक पहुंचने के लिए मुझे आपकी मदद की जरूरत सो दिस इज समथिंग वेयर वी हैव रीच लाइक वी रन कैंप्स वी रिक्रूट टू ट्रेन पीपल वी डिप्लॉय कैंप्स टू मेंटेन द सेंटर्स अक्रॉस द कंट्री Currently, the manufacturing cost of one hand costs nearly, as I said, to eleven thousand rupees to fifteen thousand rupees, which is nearly, uh, I could say, hundred uh, to yeah, two hundred dollars, somewhere two hundred dollars to two fifty dollars. So, uh, thank you. This is uh, all about Inali and what we are doing. Uh,
Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Prashant. Uh, that was very insightful, uh, to, to say the least, uh, to get to know the story that you had and how you started and how you've come to the, uh, the final product and also you're evolving every year, year on. So that is very good. Uh, congratulations on that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, uh, we have a question uh, from the audience. I think uh, Dr. Himanshu is asking something. So uh, Katerina, I think you might be the right person to just answer that question. So his question is, how do you address the problem of post-injury or tema, which reduces in two to five days, and then the pre-designed cast is not custom fit? I think maybe that is for Jordi, because he's working with, with their orthotic device after fractures and so on, because we are working today with prosthetics, okay. and that is when the arena has stabilized. So we have, of course, the, the limb could change uh, slightly, but that is not a big issue when, when it comes to prosthetics. I, I think that is more addressed to Jordi. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, Jordi, would you be able to answer that? Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, uh, so Dr. Himanchu is asking, how do you address the problem of post-injury edema, which reduces in two to five days, and then the pre-designed cast is not custom fit? I mean, in terms of swelling process, there is different kind of cases. Every case has his own method of how to produce it. So in uh in you have different cases for example if you have a broken bone with displacement you cannot apply exclet directly if you don't need surgery okay if you if you need surgery you go directly to surgery and after surgery you put exclet and leave okay this is another option but when you have uh, a broken bone with displacement you need to redirect the bone redirect and and, and compress okay we have emergency solution but it's not ready yet but right now what we consider is to apply plaster for the first four days to to compress the immobilization and, and after that remove the plaster and put exclet to continue the 30 40 days 60 days okay in other cases uh if you have swelling process like we have the tool the the offset that we said so you have two options or to apply some offset and if this swelling increased super hard for some reason, remove it and make another one. I mean, it's it's not it's the same that what happened with plaster. Right now, one of three plasters that are made it, they need to be replaced uh, because of uh, bad colloquy, bad placement, or or for swelling process or whatever. So uh, it's we have or uh, let me. I mean, we have a closer system. If I share my screen for a while. Let's see. If you can see my screen, you will see here the, the closed systems, or maybe, maybe with another video, you will see better. Uh, uh, let capture uncle break you here maybe you can see where if you see these o-rings orange o-rings okay this closure system it's patent for us so what does it's uh, this o-ring has a shorting so you they this this closure system can open a little bit giving some absorption absorption of, of the of the swelling process because we use uh, an helicoidal shape okay it's the cut it's not horizontal uh, or vertical it's helicoidal what this makes that this re this makes different reasons one of the reasons is to make that it's when it's put together the strength of the cast it's super hard okay and it's not moving when you are compressing and you're making movements and at the same time some little displacement in this uh, in the in the closer system with the shorty that we have in the o-rings 
that are patent for us. Uh, one millimeter of displacement means four millimeters, five millimeters inside of the whole cast. So we can absorb some uh, little uh, swelling process. If our heart, uh, uh, heart swelling process will be becomes from some issue, like, for example, one of the is super comfortable. And people th think that they are cured. They, I mean, I'm okay. I'm with exclude. I don't have anything. And they start making things. And after that, sometimes they call back and said, no, it's, it's compressing too much, but what you did? No, I was washing uh, the, 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 the clothes or whatever. I, like, well, but you have a radius and cubitus broke or something like that. So you have to realize that you have to maintain the position. We, are, we don't make miracles. We give bare solutions. And the other things that you have to consider, it's every case has his own procedure. For example, if you receive a, a, a guy or a girl with a plaster and you remove the plaster and you put exclet, you know that after two hours to remove the plaster, this limb is going to expand half centimeter of the eye, diameter. That's for sure. So when you are going to make the mobilization, you, you know that you are going to apply 0 0.5 offset. So that means it's going to fit correctly for this uh, swelling process. This is a learning curve, okay? It's a learning curve for, from the practitioners. And we consider that in 30, 40 cases of training, they are available to know how to, how to use the software. Right, right. Thank you so much for that. So I was just wondering, is there a need for a CT scan or an MRI of the patient as well, or does your system work independently of that? No, oh, I mean, you, for, for one side, you have the MRI or, or the X-ray. Okay, this is one thing. We are not, we are not checking anything inside the ball. You are, you are, you are making your, your evaluation of the injury the same way that it's doing right now. Okay? What we are doing, we are, we are taking the, 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 the surface of the mesh. Okay, right. and and this is what making the capture, and after that we are applying the the, the software to generate the mobilization. Understood. Right. Thank you so much for that, uh, Ether. Uh, this next question is just towards you. You know, uh, keeping in mind the Indian audience. So, uh, when we talk of your offering, right, your product offering, uh, what is the pricing that you have? You know, for the end customer, if you can just shed a light for our Indian viewers here. I mean, I sorry. This so, so we have a question uh, from Dr. Manchu, and he's asking, uh, you know, the what is the cost to the patient uh, for for you know products uh, from uh, Unique as well as uh, you know from Jody as well. So, if uh, you guys can just shed a little bit of light for the end patient, that. Yeah, we are, we are constantly working on our price uh, model, and uh, so we have uh, products that, uh, you know, if you're talking about the covers, uh, they are obviously so far been very much aimed at the European and the US market. And as you can see in my presentation, I mean, these are products that need to cost uh, even up to $5,000 uh, not that long time ago. Uh, Fortunately, these prices have come down a lot, uh, both through uh, uh, the printers we use, as well as uh, the new processes uh, that we use as well with the app and so on. So we are in this range between uh, $400 and $700 right now, which is typically what to get the reimbursed in, in, in these countries. Um, we know that obviously for markets like India, where things are, you know, not paid for, <laughs> generally it's products like that. Uh, we are, I mean, the reason why we are in this conference and um, and uh, now four or five years after we introduced it in Europe and the US, uh, now we are exploring uh, more the emerging markets and how to do that. And we realized that that, again, will not just happen uh, through technology is going to happen to partnerships 
and uh, through collaborations and figuring out new business models. And uh, so we are at the beginning of, of that. And uh, hopefully this conference will maybe somehow take us in that, that direction. Um, I don't think it's possible for 3D printing in a future place, 3D printing wherever. Uh, it probably will require maybe for uh, 3D printing in India. And, uh, and, and looking maybe for, for other ways uh, how, how to do it. Um, so we get in that direction. We know with these prices, we might be able to reach also some part of the, of the community and HA, uh, who are unfortunate that they're not able to join the technical glitches. He, um, uh, he's one of our first users, and he's out to his house and, uh, and ordered it uh, privately, and he's paying privately, so certainly that is a, a way to start. And uh, we'll kind of hopefully do the next one where we can introduce it at uh, the process. So that might require new materials, new distribution systems, uh, um, new printers potentially. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see wherever that takes us. Uh, we were in this situation five years ago, six years ago, in uh, Europe and US. Uh, and, and here we are, where we are selling this in thousands of units in these countries now, and it's doing good. Right, absolutely. So uh, I think uh, the entire world is moving towards distribute, distributed manufacturing, you know, and you could probably have a place where you design everything and uh, maybe manufacture it closer to the patient. And that way, uh, you save a little bit on costs and you try and optimize each and everything. Uh, so I think that kind of a thing might work uh, sooner than later. Another thing yeah. is the, the, the actual import duties. Uh, the import duties are pretty high in India uh, for our products. <laughs> so obviously, having uh, free printing up uh, in India makes uh, sense, uh, no question. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just to kind of bypass that. So, so, so that will take care of uh, a, a big part of the process. Absolutely. I think that that is something which uh, definitely can be explored and uh, I'm sure other people in the our audience as well as, you know, on the stage could probably try and, uh, you know, extend some kind of help. Uh, all those collaborations could be done. In fact, uh, we are also based out of London and we have one facility in India as well. So uh, that is something, you know, uh, NG Labs is open to collaborate. So I think we can look into that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, so, uh, Jody, do you want to uh, shed a little bit of light, uh, you know, in, in terms of the cost to the end uh, user uh, for, for uh, you know, your system and uh, what all are the costings? I'm, I'm sure you already uh, did give an insight uh, in your presentation as well. But, uh, uh, you know, just as a ballpark figure for the end user, uh, if uh, he has to, uh, you know, in a country like India, pay for it, how uh, much is it that, uh, you know, he is looking uh, to pay for? Thanks. Uh, well, first of all, you have to understand that. Our business model is a little bit different. Our final client is not the end user. Okay, right. we do, we don't we don't work directly with the hospitals or directly with the with the end user. Our client are distributors who use our technology in different regions. Right now we are in twenty one countries. One of them is India, and uh, each distributor of Xclet exclusive distributor who puts the price of the territory because every territory worldwide is different. So, uh, and also it's not the same regulation in India than in South Korea, in Japan, or the United States, or Spain, or whatever. It's totally different. So, and like like Aiton was, was talking also, the, the taxes that they produce changes all these kind of values in, in terms of mortification machine, materials, and everything. Uh, but I, I, what, what I can say is, it's behind the price. It's, it's more or less in, in terms of India. We are 
more or less in the same price than 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 plaster and thermoplastics. We are we are there, more or less. For for sure, it's not the same if you make a hand for a kit that if you make a, a boot for a 1.90 meters guy. So the the price change in terms of volume of material because uh, at the end of the day, we what we what we are uh, or cost it's it's visiting material in, a, in and a little bit in amortization machine but our, our machines are it's are super super cheap so so it's easy it's pretty easy to get the amortization in the first year so uh the pricing it's pretty competing in the the pricing markets absolutely i totally agree with you on that uh, but i think uh, in, you know india as a market itself offers different challenges so uh, I'm sure you might have done a little bit of research as well. So what do you think is your biggest challenge, you know, for adoption in a market like India? Well, I mean, India has has a huge population, okay? But the ratio of 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 of, of uh, people who cast much more money or less money, it's 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 high. So it's two kind of different markets that you can you have to focus in India. The the we can say the private market or the public market. Okay, in terms of private market, it's not a problem because well, it's not, it's 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 easy. They can be available to for that. And in the terms of of uh, of um, of public market, uh, we are playing with different kind of other rules, like reusing some casts, uh, depend of the cases, uh, because at the end of the day, our material it's it's resin you you can you can mold uh, a little bit with 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 hot so you can change a little bit the parameters some sometimes you can fit some one of those in another fashion that can be used for second hand like for poor people okay um, but again or or pricing it's super low and most of the we are Talking with the government of uh, of India, or my distributors talking with the governments, and most of these injuries are covered. So, well, there is a gap where it's super poor people that it's difficult to access, but it's it's difficult to access also with normal plaster. Okay, uh, for sure. In in ideal world, this will be super good. I mean, the the concept of exclet in Hopefully, in, in, in a couple of years, it's to generate Exclet uh, Foundation. Like, we can offer this for free uh, with collaborations with, with companies and partnerships that we have already. But right now, we are growing. And this is not in our hand, for sure. It's At the end of the day, everything is about money. If I have uh, money uh, to, to, to move and make these movements, I'm, I will be too, too super proud to do that. And not just in India, that, that, that it's much more difficult, for example, in Central African countries like Kenya or, or Sudan or, or other these countries that there, the ratio of, of poor people, it's, it's much more higher than India. Uh, and all these countries, the way how to, pro how to proceed that, it's, it's, it's getting the solution for free or doing what we did when we start. I mean, we have all the same system in FDM. Okay, so we have our own FDM printers that one FDM printer costs $2,000 and the filament, well, I mean, maybe it's $2 cost for one cast, but for sure it's going to take four, five, four hours, five hours, six hours printing. But it's another solution that maybe we can use for this kind of population. Absolutely. I think uh, you have to balance you know, the money as well as the quality that uh, you are giving and the turnaround time. All of those are the metrics that yeah. are different markets, you know, they respond to. And in India, it is a complex mix. But then again, you know, it is all about experimenting, exploring and seeing how the market reacts and adapting to it. I totally agree with you on that, right? So thank you so much for that. Uh, if anybody else uh, from the panel wants to probably add a, a few words before we wrap up this uh, session, that would be great. Uh, 
I, I would just um, thank you, Bayat. I, I would just like to add something that I saw that we had similar insights, uh, Mr. Prashant, and 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 we because he also talked about that aesthetics and weight uh, was seventy percent, <laughs> and function was thirty, and that was something that surprised us as well when we did the research, that everyone think that the function is the most important thing, but for someone who have to use those devices every day, the whole life. The aesthetics and weight is really important. And that is when the 3D print printing technology is really preferable uh, over uh, anything else right now. So I think that, that is an important thing to, to realize, yeah. <laughs> listening to the users. <laughs> I agree. Uh, so, uh, Katrina, I just wanted to know, are you exploring the Indian market right now? Yes, we do. So, uh, like, can I know with whom you are working right now? We we are in a dialogue with different partners. So we haven't decided track yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dr. Aya is uh, our first patient, our first user. And he is really satisfied. And I'm so sorry he wasn't able to connect uh, due to technology. He's working at the hospitals with COVID-19 patients. Oh. So uh, he, he's busy with other important things right now. But but uh, he he feels that has changed his life. And, and we do those interviews with the users. And now we try to find the best way to, to meet the many people in India uh, in a good way. And as Aetha said, even though the, the ex, uh, it's quite expensive still, uh, the good thing is that with the iPhone or iPad or the phone, you at least don't have to invest in an expensive scanner. Yeah. Uh, so, and the price is going down 10 times. So it's exponential where the price is going down and the speed is improving. <laughs> so I think we have a good opportunity uh, in India as well. We're looking yeah. forward to it. I agree. I agree. So mostly uh, uh, with uh, hands, we are also planning to uh, work on uh, lower limbs, but especially uh, if you if you are aware in India, the most famous lower limb is Jaipur foot. Uh, mm -hmm. They are working from many years, but what's going on? It's like uh, uh, it's not updating with time. Uh, there are a lot of issues with the uh, limb. Now uh, there is no one in India, and uh, Inali has uh, got a lot of people who are in uh, waiting list for lower limbs. So I feel. We have a space where we can collaborate or somewhere uh, mm -hmm. we can work together. And because uh, while working with upper limbs, I got a lot of connects with uh, uh, people with uh, lower limb amputation and feels like there is a huge need for what you are doing. And mm -hmm. mostly if it's lightweight, definitely people are going to like it. Yep. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Looking forward to it. Sure. For my side, just to say that if someday Aiton or Catherine, do you want to talk with me? I will be appreciate to have a conversation Great. with you guys. Absolutely, thank you. I'm not far away from you. I'm actually here yeah. in South Spain right now. Yeah, we are pretty close. <laughs> very, very close. Maybe uh, not exactly in these times, so, but uh, just come soon. He, he can, uh, someday uh, we can make a video call to yeah. talk about it a little bit. Right. right. Uh, well, uh, thanks again, everyone, for taking time out. It was a lovely session to have you here. Uh, I hope everybody uh, you know, in the audience, they enjoyed it as well. Uh, thank you for all your insights and the valuable, valuable inputs. Uh, I'm sure uh, all the documentations of the brochures can be uh, found out on the right with the sponsors. And uh, in case anybody uh, needs to reach out, uh, to uh, you know, the presenters today, they can send an email uh, to the organizers. Uh, if not, they can directly reach out to them, right? Uh, with yeah. that, I uh, close this session. Thank you so much, guys. It was, it was lovely to have you. Thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we, we missed uh, Dr. Ajay, unfortunately, because uh, uh, he's using it, you know, and then reconnect and all that. So, unfortunately, but but I think uh, we will also try and share the videos on the on the on the panel uh, for people to actually uh, look look at the presentation subsequently uh, for whom, who would have missed it or who would have missed the opportunity. But we will actually have it uploaded, and I'm sure this uh, engaging uh, uh, the discussion would have also.
turn out to be a business platform in terms of everybody connecting with each other and sharing numbers so that's a very good uh, uh, initiative i think we've been able to gain and track and i think it it was a user and a, uh, a end user and a, a service provider is uh, meeting in a way and i'm sure everybody would have really benefited from this and i'm sure the audience will also have benefited and you can connect and your your uh, either you can be around and uh, uh, but uh, you can talk and you can uh, chat and probably there could be business opportunity even prashant and jodi prashant comes as a as a first uh, 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 aspirant entrepreneur and also jodi everybody uh, they are first generation entrepreneurs so i think it's a great opportunity to be here and to talk about how 3d printing is actually serving uh, various communities thank you so much gentlemen and uh, and ma'am for your time and it was a, it was really a, a, a very interesting uh, you know presentation you shared uh, in terms of the the way you you have been doing some great work and and i'm really uh, in a mode in terms of people coming with uh, you know if people have lost their limb and then coming with uh, you know giving I mean, that that's brave in a way you know coming up uh, coming out and you know you know sharing the app and saying you no know, this is that we would need oh i mean that's amazing so you're also empowering people so that's a great thing that you're doing and thank you so much and appreciate your joining the session and i'm sure it will have been a great engaging experience thank you so much thank you thank, thank you. you very much for having bye bye